Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm just going to do an introduction into forces, the concept of a force, and how we're going to work on the notation of forces. So <clears throat> the, the definition of a force uh, defined by Newton's second law is F equals MA. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to write something in here. I'm going to write a little arrow above this, okay, like this. And so that means that this is a vector. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Let me go to like 200. Okay, so F equals MA, so this is a vector. Okay, so a force, un, from a non-technical standpoint, uh, sometimes it's defined as a push or a pull. And so the definition of a force, though, is a mass times acceleration. So this is a vector, okay, and we note a vector by this little arrow, okay, above something. Uh, so a vector, uh, has a magnitude and a direction. So if this is force is a vector, okay, so that means it has a magnitude and direction. And I like to take it a step further and say magnitude, angle, and reference, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so it has a magnitude and a direction. So I draw this little arrow just to denote that. You should be doing that above your vectors to show that a force is a vector. So what gives the force its direction? Okay, because we know that the magnitude of the force is determined by the mass times the acceleration. But what gives it its direction? Well, the acceleration gives it the direction. So whatever direction that the acceleration is pointed in here, that's always going to be the direction that your force is pointed in here. So they're very close cousins. Acceleration and force, they're almost the same thing, right? The only difference is you're multiplying by a mass. So you can, when we get into force problems, we can very quickly get back into kinematics problems when we're looking, when we find the acceleration or we're looking for, you know, displacement or velocity, we can get it from this acceleration. So the force is just one step away from acceleration. So the units of force are kilograms, meters per second squared. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, the kilograms comes from the mass, right? I'll stay with the green here. The kilograms comes from the mass, and then meters per second squared comes from the acceleration. Okay, so there's a prepackaged unit here. These are the original units, right? This is a packaged unit, which we'll call it as a, a derived unit. It's called a Newton or the letter N. Now, I like to use this as the letter N. Um, because that's the most important thing you're going to see probably in physics, this letter N and the letter J, which is joules, right? So I don't like to, I like to kind of reserve this for Newtons, okay? You're also going to see N with the term north, but that N, I like to kind of reserve that, and I'm going to explain in a minute why uh, I like to reserve that when we're talking about different types of forces. Okay, so a force is a vector. It's a push or a pull. Um, and it's defined by mass times acceleration. The units are kilograms, meters per second squared, or our, our derived unit here from that, our prepackaged or packaged unit is going to be a Newton. Okay, so this is, you know, but we go back to our uh, original dimensions, our original SI dimensions, right? Um, so we know that uh, for SI, kilogram is mass, uh, meters is length, and time is seconds. So if we were talking about it in terms of that, in terms of the dimensions, we would say that a Newton is simply mass times length over t squared, if we were talking about the dimensional analysis of it. Okay. All right, so forces. I'm just going to give a basic introduction into some different types of forces here, um, what we would call them, and um, just to give you a, a feel for that. The first type, of, and first of all, forces, I'm going to divide them basically into um, two classifications here. The first one is going to be contact forces, and the second one's going to be field forces, okay? Contact forces means you have to be in contact with the object for it to occur, okay? A field force means it can act on you uh, from a distance without contact, okay? And we're going to learn about what those are. Um, and uh, the, the importance of both of them because when we, when we get into work later on when we get into work and energy these field forces are going to be really important for calculating conservative uh, work or conser these are going to be deemed our conservative forces um, where these contact forces are not as much okay 
So, and just jump ahead a little bit there, but that's why I'm going to spread these out, or break these up into to the two different groups because it's important to separate them from the beginning. Okay, so the first term, uh, F, first of all, when you draw a force, I, like, I would like for you to draw it with the letter F, okay, capital letter, letter F, and then put like a, a subscript here, okay? So for example, applied force is a generic term that we use to put to call a force if we don't know what it is. There's a force applied of 100 newtons or there's a force applied of 200 newtons. So you write your capital letter and then your little subscript like this, okay? That is the generic way that we write forces, okay? I don't want to get into writing forces with substituting capital letters like letter N and W. Let's stick with one standard procedure and the, the, the way we're going to do this is write F sub A, okay? Later on we might you know, when we get into the third law, we might write like something like F A B, which is the force on A from B, or something like that. But we're always going to keep the the, the 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 capital letter F and the subscripts when we're talking about forces. Okay, so that's force applied, and I could say there's a force applied of 200 newtons. It's just a it's just a generic term that we use to talk about a force. Okay, now the normal force is a force that is normal or perpendicular to a surface. Okay and it's a reaction force. It's a reaction to when you press on something it's the surface pressing pressing back on you and we would write F sub N. Okay. Now a lot of people in a lot of books you're gonna see it written as the letter N. Okay. And remember forces I wanna always draw my arrows above right. Okay. So they'll just write normal like this. Do me a favor. Don't do that. Okay. We already have N for Newtons up here. Okay. Stop writing capital letters. When I see people do that I wanna cringe. Stop doing it write the letter F and the subscript N, okay? So we know that that's a force. Because we've already got enough N's, right? We've got Newton's, we've got North, we've got, you know, um, you know. now, we've, now we're going to add normal to that? No. Keep it clear. Keep it clear. Next one is the frictional force. And this is, uh, I'm going to write this, like I says, with a capital F and a lowercase f. Friction is due to two surfaces coming in contact with each other, and it's a force that will oppose the motion if you're sliding. And if you're not sliding, it's going to go with the motion. But it's basically on a microscopic level. If you have two surfaces interacting like this, right? Okay. If I zoomed in, it's that roughness between the surfaces that's going to cause a force. Um, so it, you know, it could go with or against the motion. Uh, it's it's incorrect to say that friction is always against the motion. Okay, that's not true. It's a, it's only against the motion if you're sliding. If you're not sliding, it's with the motion. Okay. And we'll get into this. But this is what allows you to 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 walk, right? If you press back on the floor, right, if you're pressing back on the floor and you're walking like this, let's just say, I don't know that's a very good picture, but the point is the force that's allowing you to walk forward is the frictional force because your foot's not slipping. So it's with the direction of motion. Um, tension. This is due to a rope or something. We would write F sub T. Okay. Um, again, it's just a rope that's attached to something. So if I have like a little rope, and the little arrow going away, that would be the tension, F sub T. Okay, do me a favor. <laughs> do not write tension with the capital letter T. Okay, don't do it. You can do it with a big red X here. Don't do it. Stop doing that. Temperature is already, T is already temperature. T is already time. T is already period. Why are we going to complicate things more? Leave it as F sub T. That's the tension. Tension's always going away from the object. Okay. Now, let's talk about our field forces, okay? Gravity is a force that acts on you from a distance, F sub G, okay? So if you have two masses, okay, mass one and mass two, they're going to be attracted towards each other through gravity, okay? It's a field force. You don't have to be in contact. So if you're near another mass and it creates its own gravitational field, you're going to feel a force. And these forces are going to be equal and opposite. This is Newton's third law. We'll get into that in a little bit, a little bit later. Equal, equal and opposite. Okay. Do not do this. Do not write W for the weight. A lot of people want to do this. They want to say, "Oh, well, W is the weight." Stop doing that. <laughs> Let me tell you. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to give you good habits here. I know I keep telling you not to do these these things, and you're probably like, "Well, why don't I do that?" Well, in textbooks, it may be written W for weight. Well. W is already west. W is already watts. W is already work. We already have enough W's in physics, okay? So stick with F sub G for the gravity, okay? Just it's going to make your life a lot easier, trust me. Next force is electricity. So we write F sub E. Okay? If we have two charged particles, 
they're going to experience an electrical force towards or away from each other depending on what we have and those are equal and opposite too okay so that's F sub E that's electrical force next one is magnetism F sub B I'm just gonna introduce that here you can guess what that is that's dealing with a two magnets so a positive and a negative would be attracted towards each other Let me move that over a little bit I'm kinda of running out of space here oh those are all together All right, negative positive. So we have again the Newton's third law here in effect. There's an attractive force, and they're not in contact. F sub b, F sub b. Okay, so that's magnetism. Two magnets attract, and these are conservative. These are all conservative forces, and I'll explain to you what that means. It means they're path independent. It doesn't matter. The final one I want to go over is elastic force or the spring force, and this is F sub s. Now I put in here quasi quasi field force. And the reason is that it's really a contact force. It's actually in contact with an object. So if I have like a, a wall here with a spring attached to it and I stretch a little box like this, uh, what's going to happen is there's going to be a force this way, a spring force, force of a spring that's going to want to pull me back to the wall, okay, acting on this box. Um, and I call it a field force even though it's not. It's a quasi field force because its strength is dependent upon how far you stretch the spring. And that's going to actually become a conservative force. So it's not really a field force, but I kind of threw it in here because it's dependent upon the position. In other words, how far you stretch this thing out is going to determine how strong that spring force is, right? So all of these forces are dependent upon the position, how close they are to each other, and that changes the magnitude of the force. So these are not constant forces, okay? Now we like to pretend like gravity is because when we're near the surface of the Earth, gravity is, you know, 9.8. The acceleration of gravity is 9.8, but it's not really, it's, it's actually, they're all dependent upon the position, and so is the spring. All right, so that's just a basic introduction into forces and some different types of forces. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how you can begin to start drawing free body diagrams and how to represent those forces on a picture and indicate uh, the, the forces, the net force, and the motion involved with that. Thanks for watching.